Hey guys, welcome back to Central Gaming HD. Today's video, we're going to be going over the basics of Roblox Studio. So, part one is we're going to be editing a part. So, parts you are able to edit with select tool will allow you to select a part, any part in the world, any part in the studio. You just select it. So, the move tool will allow you to move the parts around the studio. Up, down, X, Y, and Z axis for all different parts. And so you can always change any part anytime by just clicking on each part, and it will also do that. The scale tool will allow you to scale the brick the size you would like to on all of the axes. You can now do that on the blue, red, and green, meaning different things. The next tool is the rotate tool. You're able to rotate by dragging one of these lines round. You're able to do it on all of the different axes. All meaning different ones, obviously. There is another tool as well called transform. You're able to transform the brick by dragging it around and stuff like that. It becomes very interesting after a while. Oh wait. It becomes very interesting after a while. When you when you just mess around with it, bit, and it's just like kind of fun. So that's after the we're gonna go from part building now to different things. Next, we're gonna show you how to edit a part rather without moving stuff around. So you're able to edit the material by going on the top view tab up here by going to view. And then the properties, and then bring up all the properties about the part that you've got selected. The only ones we're going to focus on are brick color and material. You're able to change the color of this by selecting any one of this. We're going to put it as bright violet for this, and it will change the color of it in real time. And we're going to change the material to wood. As you can see, we now have a part that has wood and is colored violet. You're able to still edit all of these stuff like this as well. And yeah, it's just as simple as just opening this and so on. We're now going to turn our attention to Cast Shadow. Cast Shadow will make you see if you have shadows on your parts. So here there's a shadow. If you turn it off, shadows will no longer exist. We have reflectance of a part. This will be how reflective the part is. So if you want the part, part to be reflective, it has to be in a, it has to be a reflective material to work. So say you had ice, oh sorry ice, and you change the reflectance to zero point five, you will start seeing the reflectance. Next we're going to do the transparency. This will change the transparency of the brick. Zero point five is obviously the half percentage of transparent, so it's just in the middle. Next is the orientation position. They're all edited when you move the part around. So unless you know what you're doing then, there's not really any reason to edit that. Can collide will be whether your part, whether your character is allowed to collide with the part. So that'll be if the character is just walking, whether the part where he's allowed to pass through the part or if he gets stuck. Can touch is more to do with scripting. So if a part touches that in a script and it will set up a function saying that you're allowed to touch it. Anchored means that your part will be stuck there, whereas at the moment where it's not anchored, if you walk into it, you're able to push the brick around, but if you anchor it, the brick will be unable to move. You're also able to anchor it up here by clicking that anchor button up here. Next is archivable. This is obviously whether you want to archive the brick later on or not. Collision group ID. You're able to put a group ID in there so that if someone walks up to the part and, ends and touches the part and they're in that group, they're able to pass straight through it. Next is locked, so that'll be whether locked will determine whether you're allowed to select the part in studio. If you ever do that by mistake, you're able to go to view, explore, then select the part, and then unlock it. You're also able to lock the part as well by going to uh, by going to here and then click lock, and then you're able to lock it by clicking on a certain part. Next is massless, so this is if you're making a physics game, you're able to just select whether this is massless. Where if it's on the floor, where it's in the air, if it's massless, then it won't weigh anything. Here down here in the part, you're able to do custom physical properties. Uh, I'm not going to go through these because I don't really know physics. So, yeah. 
root priority shape. You're able to change the shape from a ball to a block to a cylinder. You're able to also change the size of this as well. See, I've now made an invisible, made an invisible cylinder, or like a tiny cylinder. And then all down here we have the assembly linear stuff. I've never even used this in my life, so I'm not too sure what you do with that. You're also able to add attributes like strings, number ranges, and stuff like that for scripts if you need it. Next, I'm going to show you how to group two parts together. So, grouping will be used if you need to group, like, say, for example, you're making a house, it's made out of multiple parts. If you want to keep all the parts together, you're able to group it. So, first of all, we're going to open properties in Explorer. There's, there's many ways of doing this. You can select both these parts here and right click and select group. That'll then group the two parts together. And then you're able to ungroup by going there and clicking ungroup. You can also select them in the sidebar over here. Go up here and click group here. It also group it. And you can also do the same by clicking that and doing ungroup. And there's also another way as well. To be able to select both parts, click control G, which will also group it and then control U to ungroup the selective parts. There are also other versions of grouping which is unioning so if you select two and then you union a part it will then select it together and instead of making a model it will make it a union this would be used if you have multiple parts and you want to select them together it makes less parts in your game and makes it less uh less lag if you really want it to have less lag ignore that voice crack there you're also able to negate as well which is if you for say for example we like duplicate that, if we turn that to negative and then union them two together, it will then basically just remove the parts that were there. So if you union them two together, it will then create that. And then you can also click separate there, to separate them. So yeah. And say for example, you have a load of parts that you need to insert. You're also able to change the material up here. So say for example, you want cobblestone, and the colour we want to always be, I'm not sure what colour that is, but sea green, sorry. So then if we insert any part anywhere, it will always match that. And you can also go in here and change that one. And it also change there as well. And then when you insert the next part, so on like that. So thank you for watching this first video on different ways of parts. Next we'll be doing, uh, we'll be having a look at studio overall. I'll be looking at plugins, all the different reasons for these, publishing, testing your game, different models, options like scripting, and stuff like that. So thank you for watching.